Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing something pretty exciting here with the $5 Windows 98 PC. And as you probably tell from the title, we're going to be trying to install Microsoft Neptune on this computer. Now Microsoft Neptune is an operating system that we actually haven't taken a look at on this channel in a while. The first video that I did involving Neptune was actually six years ago, if you can believe that, back in 2014. That's when I did my original tutorial video on this operating system. And we also briefly took a look at it in my Windows XP development history uh, series of videos, and that was uh, a few years ago as well. Now for those of you who don't know, Microsoft Neptune is an early development build of of what was going to become the consumer version of the next release of Windows after Windows 2000, which ultimately ended up becoming Windows XP. But to give you a very bite-sized history of what ended up happening, Microsoft originally started with two different development projects, Neptune and Odyssey. Neptune was going to be the next uh, consumer release of Windows after 2000, and Odyssey was going to be the next business uh, focus release of Windows after 2000. And what they ended up doing is instead of having uh, two separate development projects, they decided to merge them together into a new project called Whistler, which ultimately became Windows XP. So what we've got here is uh, this computer right now is running uh, Linux Mint 2.0 from the last video that I did on it. And I've actually went ahead and booted off of the Neptune Build 5111 CD. Now, some of you guys who have used Neptune 5111 might be asking how on earth I was able to do that because uh, the Neptune ISO file is actually not bootable. It's an upgrade image, so you have to actually have Windows 2000 installed. Well, what I did is I, I actually went ahead and copied the boot information off of a Windows 2000 CD image and then essentially used that boot information to create a new uh, ISO image using the contents of the Neptune CD. And so that way I basically created a bootable image of Microsoft Neptune. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. You see that we're booted off of it right now and uh, let's just get started with it. So we're here at the setup screen. We're going to go ahead and press enter. This message is basically letting you know that you're about to install an evaluation version of, it actually identifies itself as Windows 2000 at this point, but when it first booted up, it identified itself as Microsoft Neptune. Now some of you guys might be wondering why it is that, oh, frick, okay, so maybe this didn't work. All right, so we got a blue screen of death there. I actually went ahead and restarted the installer, and it seems we've actually gotten past that. Now, you'll see it's able to find two unknown partitions on the uh, hard drive. That's because those are um, EXT3 partitions, so it does not recognize them. So we're going to delete both of these. We'll do the same thing with the other partition here. So we're going to press L to delete that. Now we've just got some unpartitioned space. We're going to press enter to install it on that. We're going to format it using the NTFS file system, which it obviously requires in this case, uh, since this is a Windows NT based release of Windows. So it's formatting drive right now. All right, so we're back. Now, a lot has actually happened uh, since the last clip, and I just wanna kinda sum up everything for you guys here. So what I actually did is I uh, went through the you know formatting process of actually formatting the, the drive through the Neptune installer, and it took about an hour to do. There was no quick format option, so that obviously took you know way longer because it took about an hour to complete. And once it got finished, it immediately uh, spit out an error message and basically said that it couldn't continue, uh, and, it, and it kept asking me for the Windows 2000 installation CD, uh, and I tried to just you know reinsert the existing Neptune CD. Didn't work. It kept asking for the 2000 CD. So then what I actually did is I booted into uh, Gparted, I created a new partition, a new NTFS partition, had it already formatted, and then I booted back into the Neptune installer and just installed it on that existing partition that was already formatted. And well, here we are. So it did actually work. We didn't have to install Windows 2000 like I was thinking we might have to do. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and press next here because these two options are correct for me. We're gonna put in our name, we'll just put in Michael and we're gonna type in our product key here. And for the computer name, we're just going to type in the 98 PC and press enter. And we're just gonna leave it in the Pacific time zone for now. So right now it's actually asking us for the Windows 2000 professional CD-ROM. Uh, I assume since we didn't you know, do the upgrade, 
uh, that it might have to copy some files over to it. We'll see if it's talking about the Neptune CD. We'll just click on OK and see if it uh, gives us the same message, which it might. So no, it is still asking us for the Windows 2000 CD-ROM. So I do have one of those right here. I did burn it just in case we had to install Windows 2000 first. We're going to go ahead and insert that into the drive right now. This is also on a rewritable CD, as you can see right here. Uh, it's pretty awesome since I started using these. I don't have to constantly burn so many CDs. I mean, this right here is the stack of CDs that I have burned for videos like this. And you can see that I have a lot of them here. This this uh, spool is basically filled almost all the way to the top. And I have used uh, pretty much every one of these CDs uh, in a video like this. So uh, now I just have six rewritable CDs that I can just you know constantly rewrite images to uh, when I need to use them for videos. So that's actually really, really great. Um, so we're going to go ahead and press OK here since we've got the Windows 2000 CD-ROM in the drive. And yeah, so it looks like it has to actually copy some files over from the 2000 CD and well I spoke too soon because we got an error message right here a copy error it's not able to find a file let's just hit retry this might be contained on the on the uh, Neptune CD let's actually try to reinsert the Neptune CD it still is asking us for the Windows 2000 professional CD-ROM but it could be that it's just stored on the uh, on the Neptune CD so we'll we'll try that and yep that was actually it that file was on the uh, Neptune CD that's interesting but as I was saying this setup uh, is very visually similar to the Windows 2000 setup there are a couple of differences for one um, all of the text that used to say Windows now says Neptune for example it says Neptune setup up here setup is installing Neptune components it would normally say Windows components and also there's a new logo up here this is the Microsoft Neptune logo and this comments button up here which when you uh, click that this is how you can actually submit a comment uh, to the Microsoft developer so if there was any error or you know bug that you were experiencing you could write about it here and pretty much even the submit a comments window has a comments button <laughs> like that's what's kind of funny about this um, so yeah I, I can submit a comment regarding the appearance or functionality of the submit a comment window yeah that's just that's just pretty great we're gonna get out of this for now um, but yeah it looks to be um, continuing on just fine we're going to let it uh, finish the uh, final tasks here that it has to do all right so the setup has finished copying files I've actually forgotten to set the system date back uh, since this is an evaluation copy it actually uh, requires you to kind of set the uh, date back because there is a, a time bomb on this so it does fortunately this one does actually let you select the date and time uh, right from here so we'll go back to the year 2000 let's just go January 19th 2000 that that works so hit OK and there we go so it says you successfully completed Neptune setup if there's a CD in your drive remove it then click finish to restart so we will remove the Neptune install disk from our drive go ahead and close that up and click on finish and here it is restarting right now. You can see we've got that wonderful boot screen that just says Microsoft Neptune under construction. Very, very basic, very, very Windows 2000-like, but uh, still looks pretty cool. And yeah, once again, you see it's not calling itself Microsoft Windows Neptune, just simply Microsoft Neptune. There are a couple of places in the system, I believe in Winver, where it will actually identify itself, or down at the bottom right here where it says Windows Neptune. Uh, this is actually running at a pretty high resolution. Uh, by default, which is actually kind of surprising. So here we are, it has uh, logged us in here and it is immediately asking us to create the first Windows identity, which was one of the uh, pre-release features of Microsoft Neptune. We're just gonna put in my name here. Press OK, and it's going to say you need to restart your system. Sure, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so the system has logged back in here. Now, one of the things that I want to do while I have you guys here is show you two major changes, major new uh, UI elements that have been introduced in Neptune. Um, now, I like I said, I did a couple of more in-depth videos on Neptune, especially on the activity centers, which is one of the things that I'm going to show you. And I also talked more in detail about Neptune in my uh, Windows XP development history video. So you can go and check that out if you want to learn more. But the first thing that I'm going to show you guys is the welcome screen. Now, the welcome screen was something that was introduced in Windows XP, uh, but it was also seen in this early build of Neptune here. And since this was, again, designed for home users as opposed to professional users, Microsoft wanted to kind of create a more user-friendly interface for people to actually log into the system, you know, just to make it easier for home users. And they did that using the welcome screen. So we can enable that by going into settings here and control panel, 
and there's a new uh, section here called Windows Identities. And this right here, when you double click on it, will open up a uh, new user interface. And this is basically where you can uh, create user accounts. This was one of the other uh, nice things about Neptune, is you had the ability to create user accounts. So that's how you actually create a new Windows identity. Now we can actually click on Start, Log Off, and actually log off of my account. And this right here is the welcome screen. And you can see it's got my computer name down here at the bottom. It actually looks pretty nice. It says the 98 PC, uh, and yeah, that's how uh, that this is probably the earliest implementation, at least that we know of, of the uh, Windows Welcome screen. Now, the other user interface that I want to show you guys is Neptune's Activity Centers. Now, this was an experimental user interface that never made its way into a final release of Windows, which makes it very, very cool to take a look at. What you have to actually do, it's not um, accessible in Neptune by default. You have to actually run a uh, Reg SVR32 command. Uh, this is the command right here if you guys want to actually run it on a copy of Neptune that you might have installed. When you run this command uh, with the Neptune CD in the drive, um, it will actually come up and say DLL register server in DI386 accord DLL succeeded. And now what we can actually do is go into my computer, we can go into the C drive under WinNT, and there's a new folder here called activity. We can open that up, and these right here are all of the activity center uh, files. So inside of the start folder, this is where under start page, where like the main interface is, and you'll notice it's actually a HTML file. So we can launch the start uh, document right here. And yeah, so it's an HTML file. That's because this actually utilizes active desktop. But basically this gave you, you know, shortcuts to things like email, your internet browser, kind of your, you know, most commonly used folders. Now the interesting thing that you guys can probably notice is this logo up here actually says Windows codename Millennium, which was the codename for Windows ME. Uh, so yeah, this was most likely intended to be utilized in Windows Me, uh, but again, just never saw the light of day. It's still pretty cool to take a look at. Like I said, if you want to see a more in-depth video on how this works and what it has to offer, check out my video. Um, it'll be up in the cards right now. But there you have it, guys. That is the installation process of Microsoft Neptune on the Windows 98 PC. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times per week on this channel. And if you guys have any video suggestions or you know any just comments for me, be sure to leave those down below uh, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support here on the channel. And I will see you all in the next video.